Hello, hi, and welcome back to another build order tutorial video here on YouTube. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 3cc Biomine All-In in TVZ. And we've got a game versus a barcode Zerg that I played on ladder yesterday. If you guys don't know, I do stream six days a week. Link in the description down below. Feel free to follow us, come hang out, ask questions. Enjoy StarCraft. So for this build, it is a gas after racks opening and we do open up a nice standard Hellion into Liberator. I really enjoy Liberator openings on this map specifically because I find it easy for the Liberator to kind of get into position on a third base. And also the Hellions have a really easy time kind of bouncing between all three of the bases. So it makes it quite easy to do Hellion harassment as well. So like I said, gas after racks, we're going to saturate that to three to three once that finishes. And as well, our SCV building the barracks will be the SCV that builds our command center. It is TVZ, so we have the option to go for a 19 scouts that we will do. We could also not scout and just build a safety marine back at home. But playing it extra safe and going for that scout this game. Uh, of course, the thing we're looking for at a 19 scout is to make sure that the Zerg natural is about 90% completed by the time we get here. That way we know that it's not a pool first, so we don't have to worry about any early lings kind of coming into our natural and annoying us. So build our second depot after the command center. SCV does see that hatchery at about 90%. I also poke up into the main just to be extra, extra safe, and I do see the pool in gas timing. So I'm 100% confident that the Zerg isn't going to be doing anything cheesy to us so far. Uh, marine follow-up as well, and getting a factory right when we have the money. Uh, so like I mentioned, if we weren't going to SCV Scout, I would build a second Marine right now, and I would cancel it when the Reaper gets to the Zerg natural, if it was a pool after hatchery. If it was a pool first, I would let the second marine finish. And we would be very safe against any early ling aggression. So getting our sec get second gas geyser after the factory as well, we're going to swap these two off once they finish and start producing hellions. The reaper is just trying to be annoying and keeping an eye on the front of the zerg base, making sure we don't see any roaches come out or the queen doesn't get any easy creep tumors without my reaper trying to contest it. Always want to be a little bit annoying as best you can. Um, so yeah, swapping that off, getting two hellions, we're going to float the barracks over and give it a tech lab so that we can start stim pack. And yeah, setting ourselves up for a nice mid game here. We're going to start that depot wall off in the natural as well. Take a sip of water here. Uh, Reaper gonna go into the main base just to try to see what's going on right before speed finishes here. Uh, don't see any layer, don't see any roach horn, so I'm feeling extra, extra safe. My two Hellions are now crossing the map. They're gonna go join the Reaper and I'm gonna try to be a little bit annoying, pick off more creep if I can. Still producing Hellions at home. We got that Liberator. And once we build the Liberator, our next 100 gas, we spend on Stimpak so that we can get stim as quickly as possible. We're going to be going up to six Hellions total, um, making sure we continue to build depots here as we are going to wall this off with a command center in a minute. Always want to make sure that we're walled off when we move out with our Hellions so that we don't accidentally lose the game to a Ling run by. Our opponent does go for the Overlord Scout, which we do have two Marines that we can just quickly kill. So the Zerg is going to know this is coming, but that's totally fine. It's not a build that needs to be hidden or anything. It's a pretty standard way to open in the matchup. So so I'll pause real quick here. Um, once your six Hellions are done, you do float the factory over and give it its own tech lab. And as well, you throw down two additional barracks. 
as well. Finally, you throw down a reactor on the starport once the liberator finishes. This way we can swap this barracks with this starport and then this barracks gets this reactor. That way we have three barracks with add-ons right at the same time, allowing us to produce a lot, a lot of Marines, which gives us the freedom to do an attack later on. So Hellion's gonna join up on the right side here as well, the Liberator is gonna go and try to get some damage behind the mineral line while the Hellions try to poke in. I never really go for a run by unless the Liberator is in position. The reason for this is you want the Liberator to be attacking drones so that the Zerg player uses his Queens to defend the Liberator. That way the Queens aren't attacking my Hellions. So there's a little bit more freedom that way to deal drone damage since you don't have Queens or as many Queens chasing your Hellions around as you would otherwise. Um, back at home, still just getting that command center up, getting the tech lab on the factory. The reason for the tech lab is because you want to produce a tank right away. Because if the Zerg were to go for a Roach all in, you want to be sure that you have your tank out as quickly as possible. So if I were to scout Roaches with my Hellions right now, my tank would be on the way and I would be able to build a couple bunkers very easily. Um, as well, the next two things we're going to get are two eBay's and then two gas geysers. That's going to happen while we're microing the Hellions. So always something to remember. You don't want to forget those timings. It's very, very important. So Liberator flies behind the mineral line, takes a lot of damage to the spore, unfortunately. So it's not really going to do that much. At the same time, the Hellions tried to poke in, but couldn't really find damage. So just backing off. Don't need to commit the Hellions unless you're sure that there's potential to do something. It's always good to just deny creep spread and uh, kind of take map control instead if you can't do anything. But always kind of just moving these Hellions around, trying to find uh, lings to kill, trying to find creep tumors, just trying to be as annoying as possible. So gas geysers are done. I'll saturate those in a second here. One one on the way. And as you can see, we have our barracks that are on the reactors. We're producing Marines. And then once I have my first tank, I send my factory to give itself a reactor so that we can start producing widow mines. Hellions did actually go for a dive, uh, trying to go for drones and lings. I do tend to YOLO my Hellions more than I like to admit. I think as long as you can kill the majority of the lings and get a few drones, you're you're okay but i'd still would have preferred this game to keep the hellions alive and just kind of keep killing creep if you keep the hellions alive too you can easily throw down an armory and you can just morph them into hell bats and go for a follow-up push with the hell bats that's also very very strong uh something i would probably have done this game if i could do it over <laughs> so uh the final piece of the mid game part of this build is our next two barracks which I do throw down right here. And then both of these barracks are of course going to get reactors so that we can produce even more Marines. Um, right now we're just waiting for our two medevacs and once our first two medevacs pop out, we should have enough Marines to fill up uh, the, the medevacs fully, except for the one Marine that got left behind, of course. Uh, and then of course building depots in a wall because we want to be able to wall off against Zerglings. So yeah, Medivac is going to go across the map. We're basically looking for creep tumor kills and ling trades. Uh, the more units we can kill without losing any of our marines, the better. We're just trying to trade as efficiently as possible. And the real like main objective of your Medivac drop at this point is to clear creep so that later in the game, when we do our 2-2 attack, we can push somewhere that has no creep or less creep. So always trying to like think ahead into the game as to like what your next move is gonna be. So since I started killing creep in this area, this is likely where I'm going to be attacking because if we were to look on the left side of the map, the creep is already getting spread even more over here and there's nothing to contest it yet. So the right side is gonna be the area with the, le the least amount of creep as long as we continue to uh, be annoying on this half as well. Uh, still producing medevacs, we are going to start to load up Widow Mines and Marines so that we can do a dual prong attack. I do get a second factory as well that I put on the original tech lab 
Uh, the reason for this tech lab is so that I can get a widow mine burrow upgrade so that the widow mines burrow a little bit faster as well. So yeah, setting ourselves up for a nice dual prong aggression, pushing on the right side, pushing on the left side, trying to kill creep, like I said. Um, getting Ling trades like this is just really good because you're always just killing units for free. I like to kind of bounce between the bases as best I can, so I lift up the units and go into the main base. This means he has to send the Lings into the main, and the Banelings are always going to be slightly behind. In this case, there are no Banelings, so I'm going to get to kill a bunch of Lings in a really awesome trade here. There's really nothing that he can do about it. He had one Baneling. I could have sniped that Baneling, actually. Uh, left side of the map, he got a good trade because uh, I wasn't very attentive over here, but I would have preferred to have just lift that extra medevac of units and not lost anything, of course. Um, and then the final, final piece of this all-in, build order-wise, is the are these final three barracks. You want to throw these three barracks down once you have the money for them as long as you're constantly producing off of all your production, you're more than fine. Also starting 2-2 right away, which I definitely forgot. Here, here it is. Good timing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just continuing to kill creep, building up our army supply. The timing we are gonna go for is 2-2. Uh, we should be at around 180 army supply at around the 10 minute mark, assuming we don't lose any units. Uh, but yeah, just setting yourself up like this this creep spreading ability is uh is, is really limited by the zerg now because now we have widow mines we have a tank we have marines if he wanted to kill all of my units over here he would have to take a really inefficient trade which he's gonna actually try to do right now but like these widow mines are just so well spread he's just never gonna get close without losing a bunch of units for free so good trades good trades again the units on the right just constantly killing the creep tumors over here because in the back of my head, I'm still thinking, like, this is where I'm going to attack. So I need to make sure the creep is as little as possible over here. Um, and, and, and also, like, the left side is, is, is an option, too, to attack later on. Because I also did a good job at clearing creep over here. So now I have two options for attacking, which is really good. Usually you only have one option. Uh, the Zerg is still just trying to take trades, but... Not really doing too well, losing mutas, losing banelings to widow mines. Um, and at the same time, we're just macroing up, building more widow mines. Something I would have preferred to have done is uh, I could have actually just uh, started rallying, not rallying, but sending out these units faster and splitting them off. So I could have taken like half of these units and put them with this group and then taken the other half of units and put them with this group. That way we can just keep dual prong pushing, but with a little bit more strength. But instead, I kind of just go for that 10 minute timing instead. Uh, like I said, we're 186 supply at the nine minute and 40 second mark. So this build can get you up to supply really quickly. Uh, he does take out the units on the left, but we are already set up to go in. Uh, just gonna kill these rocks down and then get a good spread on my units. You wanna be, you wanna be pre-split as much as possible. I actually don't like the fact that I'm deep on creep right now. I think this is pretty dangerous of me. Um, the Zerg does try to go for a counter, but because of our depot wall off, and of course we're rallying back at home, he's never going to be able to do anything. Um, so yeah, just spreading my Marines, great pre-split. He's going to try to take little fights, but every time he does, I'm just going to split my Marines and my Widow Mines are going to get excellent trades. Uh, those lings do get in the natural, but my rallied units are just going to take care of that very easily. And here he comes to try to take a fight, but our pre-split is just way too good. He's never going to take an efficient trade this way. And since we had dealt, I'm going to pause for one second. Since we dealt with the counterattack, I'm very safe to just send the rest of my units across the map now. So that's what I'm going to do. Um... He is going to keep trying to take fights. He will eventually kill all these units, but it's just too late for him. We're now starting to fall ahead in army supply, and my backup units are on the way here. And more importantly, the creep spread is just gone. So the distance between the edge of creep and his base is so small now, it's very easy for me to just start taking really aggressive fights. He even loses a few muta for free here. 
But yeah, just aggressively placing those Widow Mines and just waiting for him to commit here. Once he commits, I'll start to split and uh, back away so he runs into the Widow Mines even more. I could definitely see myself uh, loading up a couple medevacs and just dropping on the left side as well. I feel like there was a lot more potential for dual pronging this game. At this point, I'm already feeling confident that I've almost won, so I guess I kind of just started to be a little lazy here, but yeah, just trying to bait fights. Uh, once the majority of the banelings are gone, I will go and try to just finish them off. And there he goes. He taps out once he's out of banelings. So yeah, I hope this is kind of a good intro video for you guys on this build order. It's one of the more common all-ins that you see in pro play these days. A lot of pros like this 8-rack style. Just a lot of marines, a lot of marauders. Uh, I definitely had the money to expand behind this as well while I was pushing. You can definitely take a fourth base if you'd like. Um, again, I was just kind of being lazy towards the end here. I kind of felt like I had already won the game, so I was pretty confident just a moving my whole army up this ramp to finish it off. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments, and I will see you guys next time. Keep on keeping on.